Hello, my name is Cathy Hind, and I describe myself as an audiovisual artist. Um, I work with visual art and I work with music, um, but I'm really fascinated in trying to create work that combines the two, um, where they enhance and complement each other. So today I brought this piece with me, which I call Piano Migrations. Um, but before I demonstrate and show it to you, I want to give you an insight into the ideas of where it came from um, and what led up to it. So. The first piece I want to show you is this music box, um, which I've been playing around with. And I'd also, I've got a quite a fascination with birds and the natural world. And I've been taking a lot of photographs of starlings as they make their amazing formations in the sky over the winter. Um, and I just thought it'd be interesting to just print out one of my photographs of starlings onto a card and play it through this music box. So I'll, I'll just show you how that works. So it's a really, really low-tech, simple audiovisual composition. And it's worth mentioning at this point that I have an interest in graphic scores. Um, a graphic score is a musical score where the music notation has been slightly abstracted or subverted. So some graphic scores might still use notes and staves and ledger lines, but they've been slightly abstracted and changed. And other graphic scores might be really abstract graphic visuals um, and are much more open to sort of subjective interpretation. So with this, it's a graphic score made from a photo of birds, but it still maintains quite a lot of the conventions of a normal musical score, read from left to right, um, low notes at the bottom, high notes at the top. So I've kind of kept quite a lot of those conventions with this piece. Um, so moving to the next piece I want to show you, I was lucky enough to go and do an artist residency in a very beautiful part of Portugal with a group of other artists. And again, I was really noticing the birds, and um, I managed to get a video of the birds, these house martins, landing and taking off from telegraph lines. And I thought, wow, that is really, really like a musical score. So having been playing around with this music box, um, I worked with another artist called Ivan Franco, who wrote a custom little bit of software in Max MSP that could then, um, the computer could then actually read the image of the birds as if it was a musical score. So I'll show you a short extract from that. So again, it's a graphic score using natural, found phenomena from the natural world. So it's just a shot of the birds, and where the birds move, they play the notes. But I think with this piece, it kind of it has a slightly musical quality that's enhanced by the way that it's translated. So with the sequencing line going across like that, some birds stay where they are, and other birds fly away. So you, you do get this sense of a, a musical motif that repeats and gradually changes and has variations. And also, I've chosen to use samples of the music box and a prepared piano so then that really references this idea of um, a musical score or piano roll or something that goes through the music box. Um, and so this leads me on to a web-based piece that I've made called Twitcher. Um, now this piece it uses a similar idea, but this time it only really develops and evolves if people take part and participate with it. So the invitation is to use an existing application called Audioboo, which is the audio version of Twitter. So you sign up to it, you have a username, and you record sounds and upload them. And you can geotag these sounds and also tag them with, with words that describe the sound. Um, so the idea with this piece is an invitation for people to record bird song, tag them with the, the location where it's recorded, and also tag them with the word Twitcher. And if they tag Twitcher, this map, which um, was made with a digital artist called Ed Holroyd, it will grab all the audio view uploads with the tag Twitcher and put them on our map in the places where they were recorded. Um, so what I end up is this kind of evolving map of birdsong uploads. And again, I wanted to use this idea of a sequencer as a musical score. So you, you can go online and play with the map 
Um, zoom in, have a look at the tags, see what see what's there. And then when you've picked a few, you can press play, and then the playhead triggers the samples. Of course, it's a little bit more difficult to necessarily tell when things start and stop because they, they might be long samples, they might be short samples, some might be longer than the other, but I love the way this is completely evolving based on how people use it. So there's two invitations to play. One is to play with the map and another is to upload. You can actually change the direction of the scrolling line with the controls at the top. And then you can also have a little look at who's uploaded the sound and what they've called it. So, and one little bit of extra functionality is that if you click the little music notes at the top, it turns it back into a music box. And you can change the speed of the line as well. So I still wanted to keep this idea of this music box musical score. I think you can make this little random tune. So that's Twitcher, and uh, the name is a cross between Twitter and Flickr. Um, and the other thing about Twitcher is I organize Twitcher walks, um, which might coincide with some sort of event in the birding calendar. So this is at, on the Somerset levels when all the starlings in the winter do their amazing, spectacular aerial um, acrobatics. So we go out for a walk all together. I arrange it on, usually on Twitter and social networking tools, and we meet up, record the birds, take photos, and upload them. This is as at a, this is a sound... Uh, sound conference. There's lots of people with more professional equipment there. Um, and what's quite nice about doing the walks is it brings people together on a local level to come and record sounds and, and, and share that experience. But then the people who come on the walks, some of them sort of take it on and carry on uploading sounds so you get this kind of other interaction and participation with the piece. So having shown you those, I want to now move on to the piano that I've brought, which I call Piano Migrations. So... Um, the first thing I'll do is it does actually use the same video as the bird sequencer, but I've treated it in quite a different way, again working with a programmer and musician, Matthew Olden. So I'll demonstrate that. I'll just pause that for a moment. So it's actually a six-minute video that works on the loop. And I present this as an installation, usually. Um, so what I've done is, because people could normally kind of come right up to it and have a look, um, I've done you a, a video of close-ups so you can see what's actually happening on the, on the surface of the piano. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking the video of the birds and on the, on the computer looking for movement in that video. Um, and it's looking at it in a 5x5 five five grid. So there's also little devices on the piano, which you've seen from the video, that are motors and solenoids. And they're placed in the same 5x5 five five grid. So if the software sees some movement in a certain area of the video, it will then automatically trigger the device in the same area, giving the illusion that the movement of a bird literally does actually make the device move on the piano. And it's got that direct correlation. Um, and space. So, again, going back to my initial statement about wanting to combine visual art and music, I've got a few thoughts to ponder on with this piece. So, um, it's hanging up uh, as if it was a picture, perhaps, or a sculpture. 
There's some kind of tension in the sense that it's a very, very heavy object, and the lightness of the, the birds flying also has quite a lot of connotations with sculpture and visual art. I can't get away from the fact that it's a piano. It's, um, and it's got nuts and bolts and pennies in it that makes it a prepared piano, which obviously kind of references John Cage and that history of subverting the piano and experimental music with piano. Um, the mechanicalness of a piano, you play with keys and it has a mechanism, and I've replaced that mechanism with a different mechanism that can only really be triggered by images. So I've tried to create something that is an instrument that's played by images. So with that in mind, I thought to myself, well, I can go further with this, and what I'd really like to do is, um, as well as have it as an installation, I want to use it as a performance tool. Um, and so with Matthew Alden again, I developed, we developed the software a little bit more so that I can change the videos live. I can also change some elements of the videos, like the speed of them, the brightness of them. So it affects how it's read and how it plays the piano. So to give you a quick example. Um, so this is a video of a crane. I want to stay with videos of birds. I'll just slow it down. So I've got lots of videos of cranes and I'm placing them at different points and they trigger different mechanisms. And by changing the speed I can change the sounds that they make. So to give you another example. So that's, ooh. <laughs> that's working with um, uh, videos quite straight. And now I've also got this other system where I can map. I've made a video where birds are exactly where all the devices are. And um, let me just get my, my settings right. I can actually then make the birds twitch. Hopefully. Oh yes, I need to turn that down. So now I've got much more control over it, like a, a musical instrument played by visuals. And I've also got some pre-programmed sequences. That's just playing any random one in, a, in, a, in time, which I can speed up. So you know, it's got a slightly frantic, chaotic element to it as I use it because, of course, I want it to look interesting and I want it to sound interesting at the same time. So anyway, this is, this is taking it a step further into a musical instrument. So what I also wanted to do with this at this point was um, go back to this idea of a graphic score and invite other musicians to come and join me with this creation. Um, and the invitation to some improvising musician was to come along and join me and to actually look at the piano and treat the imagery as if it were a graphical score and respond to it. So we've come from sort of quite a systematic graphic score where it's following a lot of the traditional conventions of musical score to something that's much more subjective and open to free interpretation, really. So I've got a couple of videos from these performances. This first one is with Matthew Olden, and we performed it in San Paolo last year.
So that was just some extracts from that performance. Um, and I've got some extracts from another performance with a theremin player and a cellist. And Matthew Olin again, and he's, what he's doing quite a lot of is um, sampling the piano live and kind of extending those samples and stretching them out and changing it. So this is theremin, cello and electronics and the visual piano. <laughs> This is quite a new experiment with it, and we're hoping to do more performances and invite other musicians to kind of play with it. So thank you very much. That was my adventure in combining visual art and music.